Hi everyone, Kate Bore and Fiona Peeman joining you for this week's Facebook Live where we're continuing the conversation around advocating for ourselves. And today we particularly want to talk about what stops us, what gets in the way from advocating for ourselves and our career goals. And I think this is a really important conversation. And where I want to start is many of us think that this isn't something we should have to do, that our hard work, our loyalty, the contribution we make should really speak for itself. And I think the first counter response to that is that assumes that everyone is paying attention, is across the detail and actually is able to connect the dots and has visibility and line of sight over the problems you solve and the value you bring to the organisation. Yeah, I think this is a big one because we want it to be enough. We want what we're doing to stand for itself. And we want our leaders to see that and we want them to reward us for it. But it takes away all our agency when we do that. And so when we're relying on something external to ourselves, we're not in the driver's seat and we're not able to showcase and to let others know the value. We hear all the time from leaders that they've got fabulous, accomplished, talented women in their team. They are doing a great job. They are delivering and yet... They won't speak up. They won't advocate for themselves. They won't share all they know for a whole lot of reasons. Um, and I think this really can undermine progression. So we know that this is a big topic and we understand that a lot of things get in, in the way. And we just wanted to unpack a few of those and help, um, I guess, shine a light on some of the things that we know if we can get clear on it, we'll, we'll actually shift things for us. And the first piece is about if I was to advocate, if I was to speak up, if I was to share more of my achievements and accomplishments, what is it I would say? How would I express myself? How would I do this well? And immediately we get into a whole debate and discussion and concern about I don't have the words, I don't have the way in which to do this. And I think, Kate, a lot of this sits around um, being unclear not having clarity of what it is. Yeah, clarity of what I want though, right? Um, many people are often surprised when we talk about this, but most people are not clear about where they want to go professionally. If we think about, you know, the next three to five years, which is often the time frame we use for career planning, very few people are clear about what it is that they want. And so if we are unclear, we are not going to, from a place of clarity and confidence and certainty, be able to advocate, be able to talk about what it is that, that we want. So clarity is really crucial. Getting clear about who you are, what you want, where you want to go immediately then allows you to do the work and there is work required. So some preparation to figure out how would I actually lean in and have those conversations with people. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this automatically leads into it feeling really uncomfortable. Every time we're in rooms, every time we're sharing this topic um, in any context, the first thing people come back to us and say is, oh, I just don't know if I could do that. You know, um, I would be in the spotlight. What would other people say about me? I would be seen potentially as self-promoting and all that discomfort. It is understandable. I think the thing here we want to say is it's really normal if you aren't used to doing this, that the first few times are going to feel uncomfortable. And I think that normalizing helps us think about well, what, why would I do this and why might it be worth it? Because we are going to have to challenge ourselves. We often talk about um, stepping out of your comfort zone in our work. And this is definitely one of those times when we're going to have to do something that currently probably feels like I don't want to do it. I don't think I should need to. And we're going to really encourage you to start. Um, we always say in small ways to, to lean in and do something that initially feels uncomfortable. Yeah. And so that second roadblock, right, it feels uncomfortable, really leads into the third one, which is fear. Uh, what will other people think? You know, will I be seen as self-promoting? Uh, what happens if someone says no? Uh, what does that mean about me? Does that mean I'm not good enough? Uh, what will that no mean to other people? Like all of the fears and the self-doubt that can come up and which is our very work, right? Our very work is resourcing women to be able to navigate through these natural fears that will come up. Um, to be human is to be fearful, right? It is to worry about being judged. Humans are judging machines. We are meaning-making machines. So resourcing ourselves, number one, to know that all of those things are completely natural to feel. But secondly, to help women navigate through that, 
for that those fears, that self-doubt, that concern around being judged, not to be a red flag, not to be a stop sign that says, oh, gosh, no, self-advocating is not safe. It's to help women recognize, of course, it feels uncomfortable because I'm not used to doing it. Of course, it feels uncomfortable because it's bringing up some stuff. Okay, how do we navigate through this? Yeah, I think the opportunity here is to start to unpack what's going on for you. You know, we've talked about a few things here, you know, um, not wanting to or not thinking I have to, um, being unclear, how do we get a little bit cl clearer so we can share something, um, just even understanding the discomfort and the fear that's going on. We know as soon as people unpack this, as soon as they um, get insight and self-awareness around what's holding them back and why they're not doing things, they are much more likely then to take that first step, to take that first small act of confidence. So really encourage people to unpack this and to think about yourself and your relationship with this whole idea of self-advocating, of putting yourself out there, of letting more people know, of um, shining a light on you and all the great work that you do. Beautiful. Um, Tim, we're going to leave it there. Um, if you want some help actually digging into some of those fears, the self-doubt, imposter syndrome, all of those things, that is our work. <laughs> that is what we do every day um, in the Acts of Confidence program. So if you want to find out more about the program, we're actually kicking off a new cohort next week. Um, if you want to get involved, um, reach out to us either on our Facebook page, you can drop us a um, DM, or of course, you can contact us via our website, coreconfidence.com.au.